DBT Introduction DBT allows business analytics to do operations that developers were the only ones who could do them at the past. DBT is for SQL just as the environment and unit testing and running in production is for Java or for that matter any other language. DBT gives you the tools surrounding SQL to run it as an application on production and on big data, just as in the past we had only these tools available for developers. What this means for the big data world? This means that now that many of the roles that only developers could do because they made, they created these uh, complex systems and these complex pipelines are now available to people who just write SQL. So DBT gives more power to SQL and transforms it almost into a development environment and transform business analytics into developers. What are the steps to start using DBT? DBT is a tool that we download just any other tool, just like we download the Java runtime or we Java download the Python environment, we download our IntelliJ, we also download DBT. So we go to the DBT website and we download it. After we have downloaded it, we get a CLI tool, a command line interface that allows us to interact with DBT. With this CLI, we can run DBT init my project, my DBT project, and this would create a new directory called my DBT project. If we CD into this DBT directory, then we can run another command. DBT debug minus minus config dir. This would tell us what is the configuration directory of DBT. Usually, this would be where the profiles.yaml is located. This file, with this file, we can define connections to our database, and the database could be Snowflake, could be Spark, could be Postgres, could be MySQL, could be whatever, basically the target database that we want to work with. So we would type this dbt debug minus minus config there, and it would tell us that the profiles.yaml is in our user's directory under the .dbt directory standard configuration directory in Unix systems. We open with Vim this profiles.yaml and we define our project, our connection to the database, whether the target is now development or production, the type of the database, is it Snowflake, is it Postgres, is it Spark, Next, we define the account number. If we are in Snowflake or other online accounts that require us to give the account number, then we specify in this YAML file the account number and we can have in this YAML file multiple profiles. We type in the username and the password to connect to this online database. Note that this is a profile that allows us to set the connection parameters to the remote database that will allow us further on to run all our transformation and all our code logic. And the whole of offline pipelines are dealing with transformation. And now we have the power to do these transformations with SQL because we get all the tooling around it. If we just wrote a bunch of SQLs that would get complex over time without the tooling of testing, of running, of validation, of monitoring, then we would not really be able to do this. This is why we needed the developers. So continuing our journey with the profile XAML, we enter the role. If we define the role in Snowflake, then we enter here the role, the name of the database, the name of the uh, warehouse, the name of the schema, and so forth. We enter how many threads we want. If we have a client of Snowflake, then we need to say how many threads do we need for this. And client session keep alive. This is a Boolean that will tell 
if we use Snowflake client connector, whether we want this connection to be kept alive or not. And this will affect whether we would get charged when we do not use it or not, because Snowflake takes the stance that if you are using the actual computer, then you get charged, and if you are not using, then you do not get charged. So this was a very brief introduction into dbt. We saw that it's a tool that we can download. It has a CLI. With the CLI, we can create a project. With the project, we have uh, the profiles.yaml that where we define the connection to our databases.